Hey everyone, Mark from Coast to Country. Today's video, we're gonna show you how we got to this stage with this kayak, got in, getting it all set up. Um, this is from Kayaks to Fish. This is a Next Gen 10 Mark II model. Um, really happy with it so far. Company has been good to deal with as well. Um, we actually got two of these. I, uh, this one's a storm color. Um, the other one we've got sky blue. Um, sky blue one put together, no problems at all. Um, I thought I'd just show you a quick video on how we got this one put together from unpackaging to finished product. Um, they recommend from the factory that you tighten up every screw that's in there. Uh, we went one step further than that. We took the screws out, put a bit of Loctite on them and put them back in. I ran into a bit of a problem with one of them in particular, the insert into the plastic um, fell out when I did that, dropped into the hull. Awesome fun trying to fish that out and sort that problem out. That's why this video is a little bit longer. Had a few little hiccups. Still a good product, um, just it's uh, yeah one of those things we just had to sort out. Um, if you're only interested in setting up the rudder systems for these, um, you can jump ahead, jump to this section here if you want to see the rudder. Um, other than that, we'll just go right through it. Um, it's been a good kayak, so yeah, if you like these videos, hit the like button, that'd be great. If you could help us out, hit subscribe. We're just trying to get this channel off the ground. Um, we've also got another channel called Opal Quest, so suss that out too if you're into opal mining and treasure hunting, all that sort of stuff. So anyway, let's make it happen. Okay, so first thing is pretty straightforward. We just get all this plastic off it. Right, so here's our seat. Looks in pretty good nick so far. So far so good anyway. Always get nervous when things come by career and, and everything. But um, I had no problems with the other one, so fingers crossed. So not a bad little seat, little aluminium um, seat. Um, this will go in two positions, you can have it down lower, up high as well. It's quite comfy. Um, so yeah, so that's in good nick. Survive the trip by the look of it, everything seems to be there. So that's a bonus. So this is quite well packaged up, as you can see, there's bits of this um, rubber all around it. One at the front, couple each side. Um, yeah, just a bit of, bit of high density foam. This is a nice touch. Kids were pretty happy about the amount of bubble wrap they've got on this to pop. Should have just bought a roll of that. Just got rid of some of that plastic around it. So there was like a mile of bubble wrap in that. So it was well protected. Um, I think this one traveled a bit better than the first one. Uh, this color I think is called Storm. Um, the other one is Sky Blue, I think. But that, not that that means much. But anyway, that's how it sort of arrived. Um, obviously got uh, paddles in here. I don't know much about kayaking, I can tell you that. I prefer a um, boat where you point it where you want to go and hit the motor and away you go. But anyway, kids and the missus are all keen, so I might even get one of these set up for fishing too. Um, we'll have a play with them anyway and see what they're like. But anyway, um, I have set up kayaks for four far as rudder systems today, so we'll tweak a bit with that. This one's slightly different as in not much at all, as in the colour of the um, rudder cables or cords are different. That's pretty much it so far. Um, the hatch was open when I found it. Oh, there's a rudder in there. Hopefully that's in one piece. Uh, the hatch was open. And in here, so this is a rod, rod holder. So that comes with it. What else we got? Oh, that's a lanyard for the um, paddle. And we've also got a mount for our rod holder if you want to put them on the on the rails. So what do we got in here? So that's like a little catch bag, dry bag. Now apparently you can shove fishing rods up the guts of these as well, so that's pretty handy if you're traveling and stuff. Oh, there's a rubber seal on that part. There you go. So it's they say they're waterproof. Uh, water resistant or whatever, not exactly totally dry, I don't think. Try not to cross thread it. So I think that's another feature of this uh, Mark II version. So this is a 
Next Gen 10 Mark II. Got a lot of rails everywhere, bung in the back. So other than that, um, looks all right. So what we'll do, and what I did with the other one, is I'll go around and pull out every single screw and put a bit of Loctite on them. All right, so we've got our um, paddles here or whatever you want to call them. I don't know if these are good quality or not. Don't seem too bad. I'm sure there's a special way you're supposed to set up these as in a twist on these somehow, but I guess we'll work that out later. I reckon that needs to be a lot tighter. So that's like a cam buckle. I'll just screw that up in a minute. So anyway, that's the paddle that comes with it. It's got a bit of more of a wider grip there for you to grab hold of. I have no idea what these little notches are for. Looks like it's had a shark attack already. Um, I was wondering originally whether when you lift it up, whether the water drips off it. Um, but then I thought that's what these are for. The only other thing I was thinking, maybe it's to hook on something like when you come into a landing or a wharf, do you do you hook onto stuff to pull yourself around with them? I've got no idea. Anyway, someone in the comments might tell me that. Like I said, I don't know much about the actual paddling part of the kayak, but keen to give it a go. Um, yeah, so anyway, that, that fell out of the oar, so it comes with a free noodle for swimming. So that'll be handy, wrap that self around you. Well, so what we do is, well, what I did with the other one, just pulled out every screw, basically, and um, they're all stainless screws, or they seem to be. Hopefully they're 316 stainless, which is marine grade. Who knows? Um, but anyway, we'll pull all this stuff apart and um, just Loctite everything. Um, we're using um, 243 Loctite, which is a blue stuff, which means um, it'll lock onto uh, bolts quite well, but you can still get them out with mechanical means, as in, you know, screwdriver, spanners, whatever. If you use the red stuff, that's pretty much permanent, so you almost need a bit of heat to get them off again. So you wouldn't want to use the red stuff because... Um, if you ever want to change something, do repairs, add something into your, your rails or whatever, um, you're going to struggle. So we're just using that one. Um, so yeah, you just go around tightening everything up. So undo this and, oh, I mean, that's loose as loose. So yeah, this is why, if you're not going to lock tight stuff, it's probably an overkill, you can just tighten things up if you want to. Four mil Allen key, that, and then that just takes this rack out. Slide that out there, that pops off. We'll sit that there so we don't get it all mixed up. Then it's just a matter of undoing these three screws. This one's just screws into the plastic. That's got, that's not actually a, um, hasn't got an insert. Well, that's pretty loose too. So to be, to be fair, the manufacturer did say, hey, when you get these, just go and lock tight everything. Uh, not lock tight, just go and tighten everything up, I should say. Right, where was I? Sorry, the missus came home, so I thought I'd better say hello. All right, so yeah, um, what was I saying? Yeah, the manufacturer said, um, basically just go through it once you get them and tighten all the screws up. They didn't say anything about lock tightening it. So it is possibly a bit of an overkill, but um, all we do is put a little bit of lock tight on here. So a little bit of stuff like that. Put that back on here and zip it in. Do that up in a sec tighter. So yeah, so we just get our um, blue lock tight. A little bit like that. What you don't want to do with lock tight is stick it in that actual hole because um, what can happen, you can actually get a hydraulic lock which means as you put a screw in, it builds up pressure behind it and you think it's tight, but it's actually not. So you put it on the edge of the threads. So you can do this with a manual screwdriver. I've got this on a pretty low setting, so I'm not going to strip out the brass insert because they're just basically molded into the plastic. So you don't want to crank them too much, otherwise you'll spin the brass and then, then you're in a heap of trouble. So I know that's pretty, pretty solid. So this centre one, can't do much with that, that's just straight into plastic. So that is it, so that's um, pretty much stuck on there now. So it's just a matter of putting this back together. So it just goes on like that. We can lock this later, goes in there. Same thing, a little bit of Loctite. 
Go and overdo it just a bit like that. It'll work its way around. Pop that back on. Do that up nice and firm and that's done. So that's that bit sorted. Just quickly check the knots on these as well. Should have done that while I had that out, but we'll just have a quick look. Oh yeah, that's tight all right. It's got a couple of nice wraps on it, so that's a pretty good knot. Just make sure they haven't just got a single granny knot on there. So you just pick a starting point and go around, work your way around the whole kayak. So that one's actually tight. So was that, surprisingly enough. Try not to drop them. So again, a little bit of Loctite. And stick them back in. Adjust this rail up a little bit where I want it. Like I said, don't overdo them. If you strip the brass settings out, well then you're in trouble. So, and then we just keep going. What is interesting, the other kayak we got um, had some Loctite on some of the screws, not all of them. I like had about three out of the entire, entire thing had Loctite on them and they were in no particular spot as in it's not like they were special or anything. So that's handy straight away. <laughs> that um, insert's popped out, so I'm gonna to to try and get that one out. Right, so what I've actually found is, through the skin here, there's actually not much uh, material at all. So when they obviously molded this boat, um, there must've been a bit of a defect there. So underneath there, um, that is, that thickness of the hole there, just in this section here, is literally only you know three or four mil thick, not even that, three mil. Um, underneath there's supposed to be a big knob of uh, plastic where this insert's melted into and it holds up underneath. So I've actually stuck my hand inside the hole. Oops, trash the joint. I can actually stick my hand through here and up over to the other side over here and feel that one. And there's actually a big chunk of plastic around that insert, the same as this side should be. So that's missing. And even these ones here, I can actually put my hand up there and you'll feel they're just a big chunk of plastic. So, right, to explain that a little bit, so you've got your your hole, hole there, and then there's actually a big, this is underneath the hole, there's a big knob of molding of a plastic. And these inserts, these nuts go into, into these settings. And I'll just change color. So this little brass insert goes into the setting like that basically like a little little bolt and the threads this has all got thread inside and then you put your you know your bolt or whatever into that so this bit this bit of this plastic is missing so this insert was sitting just underneath the surface of the skin and then I've undone that screw to tighten it. I mean, if, I mean, if I had to tighten it, I probably would have pulled the thing up level and it would have come out anyway. So what I've actually done, I've taken the screw out and then this has dropped inside the hole. So I really don't, I haven't contacted the manufacturer. Actually, I don't know what they'd say because realistically you'd have to send the entire quiet back. Um, I don't want to send it 450 Ks back to get that fixed. So what I'll probably do is somehow, because there's already a hole so basically this is what we've got at the moment. We've just got a little skin fitting there on the hull. And what I'm gonna try and do is just put a stainless steel 
countersunk bolt through and I'm going to somehow get a big flat washer under there and a nut but how I get inside to do that is another story so there's a few tricks you can do to do that as far as um, what the purpose of that particular part of the kayak does is I think all it does is hook, hooks this little bit of elastic over and then your oars sorry your paddle goes in there and it just stops your paddle coming off so if I can get a um, if I can get this through there with a decent washer under it and a nut with a lock nut it's probably going to be good enough bit of a pain wish I didn't have to do it but there you go the only thing that worries me now is if that's missing a bit of chunk of plastic molding hopefully all in here whatever hold there's a screw going in this way and that way to hold this handle on I'm hoping that there's plenty of plastic left in there because um, if this whole section's a bit dodgy I'll take this handle off quickly and have a look if the insert here is really bad like that well then I will talk to the manufacturer and get them to sort it out but if, if this seems okay well then we'll just do that one and right so I'll just pop this handle out just a couple of little clips that pops out there and then we can undo the screws here to take that out and have a bit of a look so I'll just go a bit easy so that's just got a bolt and a washer same same with this side So just from looking on the outside here, you can see that that insert at least has come all the way through. Like it's nice and flush, you can see it. So I'm, I'm hoping, I might even get a bore scope down there from the inside and have a bit of a look and see if I can see that fitting. Um, it might only be just this section. In fact, let's do that. We'll get a bore scope down and I'll just see how much, what's going on with this plastic. See the light shining from the bore scope inside. You can see how, how skinny that skin is. And I'll show you on show you actual picture of it in a sec when I can find it. See there, that's the hole on the other side of where that um, insert is. You can see it's never actually had a piece of plastic on there, but that's okay. We'll try and get a massive washer under there and hold that. It's going to be awkward. So anyway, it's not the end of the world. What I was worried about was if this piece is missing, the guts of it under there. I was worried about this insert underneath, which is actually the handle. And I thought if that's really weak, well then it'll tear the handle out. But that's actually got a knob of plastic behind there, so it's just that one. And really all that does is hold the cord on. Very hard to see, but that little knob sticking up, that is a big blob of plastic around an insert. And that's what, um, that what's, that's the one that holds the handle on, so I know that one's okay. That's the only one I was really interested in. See a few other inserts there along the wall. So even a spot like that there, you can see there's couple of screws when you look at the camera inside there's a couple of those knobs that hold on the inserts anyway it's very tricky to see but right so what the plan is tonight is I've just threaded on on a bit of MIG wire I've got a lock nut and I've got a big washer and what I'm planning on doing is from the other side I'll thread up this wire and then I'll pull this up tight with a bit of sicker flex and glue this up underneath um, in the center of that hole tonight. And then tomorrow, all I have to do is then drop a, I'll put a different screw in this a bit longer. And all I've got to do is then screw that into the, the washer and nut I've got in there. So you can see there now I've got a washer, stainless steel washer glued up underneath the hole there. So all I need to do now is put the bolt through and a lock nut on the back. A bit tricky to get the lock nut onto a spanner, but we'll see how we get on. So I put a longer, slightly longer um, bolt here, countersunk head, and so there's a washer glued underneath this um, skin hole now. So I'll just drop that in like that. And what we're going to do is stretch up underneath through the hole up the front here, like the access hatch, which is really a storage hatch my hand up there somehow on the tippy I can just grab that and I might be able to reach and then we'll put a lock nut in here but because I don't want that to fall all the way down when I'm trying to come up from a screw what I'll do is I'll just pack a bit of paper in there to keep this nut right up to the top of the socket so it's easy to get to so just get a bit of paper or something we'll jam in there we'll just use the quality control check card that came with this because obviously that's not much good for anything else. They didn't use it when they checked the kayak, that's for sure. But anyway, might be just one of those things. It'd be hard, 
would have been hard for him to know whether that was um, faulty or not, so give him the benefit of the doubt. Bit of mucking around getting this fixed, but so I'll just roll a piece of paper up like that. Jam it in the socket. And we can put our nut in. It'll be sitting up the top of the socket like that. So then when we get underneath, we can get it started easily onto our bolt. It's a bit tricky to hold this still and see, but you see there's a lock nut. It's a lock nut and a big stainless steel washer we got on there now. So that's um, got Loctite on it as well, and it's sicker flexed in there, so that shouldn't go anywhere. So this is what we end up doing here. Um, put a longer screw through, put a little bit of masking tape down, a bit of sicker flex underneath, because there was that wood leak if the water got in there. It's only going to go under the hole, it's not going to do too much anyway. So anyway, we'll clean all this up, and that's got that sorted, thank goodness. Bit tricky to get under there and reach that, trying to work out how to get the nut on that... Um, screws quite a bit of a stretch especially when you got your arm fully extended underneath the thing trying to get a um, nut underneath that bolt rightio so i just got off the phone to the um, place in adelaide where we got these from um, and the guy was quite helpful i explained to him what happened how the there was no plastic around the toggle he said yep yeah, no worries um, they're going to mail down a repair Thing, which is basically a toggle that you glue in apparently so i explained to him how i fixed this with a washer underneath he said no that's not a problem at all um so yeah we're going to send an email and, and it's not going to affect my warranty or anything like that so he's going to send me down a toggle anyway so i can use that as a spare so very helpful the whole process of buying these kayaks have been um, pretty informative the whole way through and i was just curious to know what would happen when there is a problem what the backup service is like and so far, I'm pretty impressed with it. So there's our repaired hook. Um, that's pretty strong. There's no way that'll tear out. And all that does is basically holds the cord for where the um, paddle goes. So that's not the end of the world. Right, we'll continue on. These ones here, thank goodness, where the handle was. Um, the moulding's quite okay there. Um, so they've got a little bit of that bubble behind there from the moulding. So handle should be nice and strong. We'll pop that, pop the handle back on. And we'll um, lock tight that on as well.
Okay, we'll check this rudder out. Interesting to see how they've um, wired up this or put a rope on it, I should say. Um, the other one was a bit weird to me. I end up changing it. Australia sticker that's fallen off. I don't know where that came from. The other one fell off today. That's a worry. I would have hoped that would be the only part that would stay on. Anyway, so this thing here, this is the rudder system. Um, from out of the box, that's how it's um, pre-made, pre-wired up, which I found with my youngest daughter. She was playing around with the other one and she couldn't get this to go down properly at the end when you're pulling it from the end. I have no idea why they put that knot on the side there. I don't know if we're in camera there or not. I'm not sure why they tie the knot coming out of the side. And that's basically just a granny knot anyway, which is pretty ordinary. So what happens when you pull the kayak right around, it jams, that knot jams on the side there makes it really hard to pull through. I found if you thread it through there and then put the knot on the back, it's a heck of a lot easier. So I'll show you that in a minute and go from there. So here's a little split pin that holds the rudder in. Washer goes on the top. Come around here and have a better look. So first thing to do, is untie your little cables here. Don't let them fall back through the kayak, whatever you do, because I reckon they'd be pretty tricky to thread back through there. So we'll get a rudder here, make sure there's no twists in anything. And simply drop that on there, make sure that washer is up the top. Put our little pin in the bottom. I probably will put another washer underneath. I'll probably get a stainless steel one under there just to stop this jumping up and down like this. Probably doesn't make much difference. So this is a bit I don't really get and it makes it quite difficult. So when you pull this rudder around, to pull that here is really tight. Like that's, that's hard to pull and it jams at that spot there. So that's quite difficult. So I reckon half the problem is is because this knot is right on the edge there and as you pull, pull it, it comes around and this knot jams hard in there and this one's not as bad as the other one, the other one was terrible and so basically that is just a granny knot anyway I wouldn't trust that as far as I could throw it so what I did with the other one and look I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it or not but I'm just going off the law of common sense that can be a worry sometimes so I'll have to get that out. That's got a bit of a burnt end on it, which is getting it stuck. So I just pulled that just quickly out the side there. It's got a big, um, big knob burr, burnt bit on. I can't pull it back through. So I'll just quickly educate the end of this. Just melt that a little bit. Wet my fingers. Try and make that smaller so I can get it through that hole there. Get rid of this gas. So hopefully we can pull that back through now. Like that. So what I've did with the other one, basically is pulled it, threaded it through here, through through there. There's a hole on the side. As you can probably see that that way. There's a hole on the side here. That's where it originally came up through here, down there, and the knot was on the other side. So what I'm doing is running it through this side here, where the rope runs around. And I'll thread this up through the centre hole there. It's a little bit difficult. I might have to um, make this um, end of this knot a bit thinner yet. 
should go. It's just a bit of a pain. They've got a big knob on the end. I might just cut this off and reseal it. Probably easier. Oh no, it's going to go. So there you go. I'm just poking that through like that. Just need something pointy. Nearly there. So all I've done is I've run that basically around through there this time. And then what you can do is just tie a knot. And look, we haven't got much room for a huge knot, so we'll just use a um, figure eight knot, which is basically a glorified granny knot, but it's just got an extra twist in it. So that's called a figure eight, as you can see the figure eight there. Keep the tab nice and close to the end there. Pull that up tight. That will not come undone. So then you can pull that back onto the back of this um, rudder there, like that. And then when we pull this around, like that, you're actually, when you pull on it now, as you pull around, there's nothing for a knot to get stuck down the side there. It's got the exact same amount of leverage, probably, oh, probably the tiniest amount less, but I guarantee you that is so much smoother than where they had it originally. So I don't know what the go is with that, but that's where I'm gonna leave mine anyway. So if you grab that now, that is so much easier to pull around. So the knot's not getting stuck there. As I tip my mat gas over and burn the kayak to the ground. So anyway, um, that's one mod we do. I don't know why they do it that way, but anyway. Um, people are probably screaming at the TV going, oh no, you can't do it because of that, whatever. I don't know, but that's how I'm doing it. Rightio, so we'll adjust up these foot pegs, pedals. Um, I know from the other one that the distance this sort of has to go back um, is pretty much nearly to the end for my daughters. I think they had it, where's that one? I think they locked it in about there somewhere. That tab was at the end. You can put these wherever you like. So obviously that's a foot rest. You can push against that and it's doing not much at all. So that's where you lock your feet if you needed a bit of a rest. I wouldn't push on that too hard. You'd probably snap it off. So what I've been doing is setting up this top pedal pretty much in line with that. So your tips of your feet are the things that are gonna steer. So you could actually set it back this way further, or you actually can't go too far that way, sorry. It's gotta be, it pretty much has to be up in line. Um, so these go this way and that way when the other pedal pulls back, this has moved basically that distance. You can't have them set back here to do this sort of thing because you'd have your toes curled over just trying to get it to move. So I've just been lining it up straight up and down. There's no, real instru there's no instructions that come with this kayak at all out of the box. Um, you get online and try and look up the pedal thing and it's pretty vague, I found. So anyway, I hope this video helps someone out. So I'm just going to line these up like that. Um, so I'll do the same the other side. I'll just adjust this lever back to exactly the same spot. And then these flip up like that. So all we do here is we just pull this little um, rope until, just keep putting tension on that, until that foot pedal I was talking about at the other end. I might be able to show you. Keep pulling the rope, you can see that's moving there. I'll just keep pulling that till it's straight up and down pretty much. And then back here. So back here at our rudder, this is pretty much roughly straight in line. Obviously it drops into this little stop spot where it's, um, when it's stowed. So I'll just thread that through the bottom hole like that. And I'll just triple check. So we've got our, got our section done the other end, straight up and down. So that's close. We can tweak this later if, if we need to. And all I do is just lock it in there, just temporary like that. And same with the other side. Grab a cord here, give it a pull. You can see the pedal moving there. So I'll get that pretty much straight up and down like the other one. It's a bit hard to see from here, but I'll adjust this in a minute. So get it pretty close like that. Come back here. Thread that through like that one. Then pull that around like that. Just temporary, let it lock. And then what I can do is just have a quick look at where these pedals are sitting. So they're actually not too bad. So you can see they're kind of straight up and down. That one's pretty much up and down as well. We can tweak these later. So anyway, so I'm happy with that. Um, that was a good guess. All we need to do now is tie this off. So all we do is lock it there. That's in that little groove there. Bring the string back here. 
through that hole a second time, like so. Pull that through to the front, and it's still in that little locking groove as well, so that helps it stay in there. And all I do is put a little um, bit of a loop, like so, pull that up nice and tight, and then do another loop as well, and that'll lock it off. So it's really easy to adjust, and you can undo that quite easily, but it won't come undone by itself. Same on the other side. So we've got that pretty much where we want it. Thread that back through the hole there again. So it's still through our little um, groove there, which sort of is a temporary locking thing. So that's pretty much holding by itself there now. Just do a simple loop. Like so. Another loop. All that means is you can get it undone if you need to. And that is pretty much it. If we find that we're cruising along um, and your feet are straight and it's going to the left or right, all we're going to need to do is tweak one of these cords a little bit to, to trim it up basically and get it nice and level. So all we do is pull your rudder down and into the, into the water, locks it off here on the little um, quick cleat, chuck that inside and she's there, happy days. Come back to here, got our pedals all nice and lined up again. I'll show you down the back. Actually, I'll lift the rudder up a bit so you can see that. So I'll let the rudder come up there. And then when you play with your foot controllers, simply your rudder working. So you've got a full lock that way, full lock that way, back to centre. And they still look nice and straight up and down, both of those. We can release our rudder. It'll go back into the housing. Like that, it's not quite in the middle, you can jiggle around a bit, there you go. So again, this is smooth, you can put this knob here wherever you like. You don't even need to use that. So if you want, just grab your cord, and that's pretty easy to pull. The quicker you go, the easier it is. Okay, just get your favourite seat. Um, this particular model, it can drop in to have it nice and low, or if you want, you can have it nice and high. So I've got no idea where you'd have it, but I'll put it up high from, for the time being. It's just a simple strap underneath there, which just locks onto there. Same on the other side. On the um, video, it did say there was two, two latches, as in, so that's the back one to stop that coming out. On the video um, online, it just did say there was another one here somewhere that's strapped over or come across the, there, I'm not really sure. But um, I'm not sure if you'd fall back out of that or not, but I doubt it. Anyway, that is pretty much it. Um, one mistake I've seen quickly is I've got the rope stuck around here. And that will affect... Oh no, that's actually not too bad. I oh, will tighten that one up a little bit. Because that has now moved this pedal a little bit further back than straight up and down. So I had it hooked on there, I didn't realise how it's gone straight there now. When I've taken the slack out, it's sprung back a little bit. So I'll tweak that rope up a tiny bit. In fact, I'll do that now. So you can fine tune all these, no worries at all. So that was just that one there. So the idea of these loops makes life a bit easier. You can simply undo, undo the loop, grab the pull tag of that one, pull it out. That can come back through like that. And with this, we can give that the tiniest little tweak. About like that. Lock it back in that little groove. Straight back in through that hole. Lock that off again. And that's ready to go. So you can fine tune these really easily if you find your kayak's not tracking right or you've messed something up like I just did then. So that's better, they're all nice and straight now. Right to go. So the other thing we do is we quickly, um, there's a little bolt here with a lock nut on there. We'll make sure that's uh, done up nice and tight as well. This one was actually set pretty good and so was the other side. The first kayak I put together, this was loose as a goose. Um, I had to tighten that up because the pedal was slopping around. Um, tighten up this little screw here, you go gentle on that one, that's only just a, a self-tapper into plastic, so you just give that a, make sure that's nice and firm. It's one on the other side as well. Comes, also comes with a uh, lanyard. 
which is for the, uh, what do you call it, the paddle. So I'm assuming you just snap that onto probably wherever, the seat or whatever. Um, it's got a quick release bracket there. That would go on your paddle. Uh, also comes with a rod holder. She's got a simple adjustment. Take that out if you can crank this around to wherever you need it. So, and these can sit in here wherever you want them. And they've got a quick strike, um, quick strike set up on your rods. So it's not a bad idea that. So the kids are going to be using these and misses. So I probably won't hijack one just yet for fishing, but guaranteed I'll probably will. Uh, it also comes with a bracket so you can mount your rod holders on the these rails and things here. So these um, stainless steel tabs just lock un underneath there and you can mount, mount these racks wherever you want or you can down the side, put them anywhere. So I'll probably play around with that later and if I do get into kayaking I'll, um, I'll probably end up putting a fish sounder in it. And speaking of that, in here, so this is another little storage hatch. Just lifts out. That's um, where you can chuck a fish in there. Man, you wouldn't get much in there, would you? But you probably could keep a lot of stuff dry in there as well. So through here, there's a hole goes through, and there's a plate that screws underneath the kayak. You can actually run a sounder down there, and you cable tie the transducer to the bottom of the kayak, and that actually fills up with water that section. So that's that, and you can mount your sounder in any of these holes up here. So we'll see how we go, but I probably will end up doing that. So here's our paddle. Comes with a quick release mechanism here, so you can adjust it up, you can adjust the length and adjust the um, angle of the, how the paddle sit in the water, I guess. Um, quick quick clamp there, a little bit um, loose, so I'll just give this a quick adjustment. Just a simple matter of tweaking that up a bit, so when that locks around it's nice and firm. Do a tiny bit more, don't want to overdo it. That's nice and firm, that's not twisting now or coming apart. So still got a tiny bit of adjustment left if you wanted to make it tighter. So that, I've got one of these either side. That can just get stored. I think it just sits like that against your kayak. And then this little rubber thing here, uh, elastic I should say, goes under there. And there's one each side. And this is what fell off the other side, so we've got all that sorted now. So. Right, so here's the other kayak we did before the one you just saw. Um, I think this one's called Sky Blue or something like that. Basically they're identical um, Next Gen 10 Mark IIs. Um, they're exactly the same. The only thing I noticed different with it was the um, cord here. Different colour. Not like that matters and it's heaps longer, the cord. So I don't know what stories of that. Same thing again though. I put the knot on the outside of, this, um, of the rudder so it doesn't get jammed. All right, well, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully that's helped someone out putting one of these together. Um, like I said, I'm no kayak expert, but just went a bit of common sense, and um, hopefully that would be a big, good bit of fun. So, um, yeah, if you enjoyed these videos, hit the like button. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. That would be awesome. That will help us out. So um, we're just trying to get these channels off the ground. So, um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. See you on the next one.